Hello everybody and welcome to this month's tech tip video. Today we're going to be exploring in order processing the job entry function and the pricing costing tab specifically. Order processing job entry. I'm going to go ahead and open up a job 10161 an existing job in the system and navigate over to the pricing tab and the pricing tab is where you can display the selling price of the part. This comes over from the material master file or from the quote if you copy from a quote. There are four sub tabs here. We have the additional charges tab, the progress payments tab, the time and material tab, and the costing tab. The costing tab is what we will be focusing on today. The costing tab is where you can review estimated and actual job costs and this will be the focus of today's tech tip. The costing tab is a read only tab and the information contained here is derived from other job boss transactions and modules. This tab contains four rows, include assemblies, estimated row, actual row, actual pre-bill row. You would select this include assemblies checkbox. If this is an assembly job and you want to include the costs from other sub assemblies tied to this job. The second row here, the estimated row, gives you the ability to review the estimated costs, which include estimated labor, estimated burden, estimated materials, estimated services, the total cost, or actually the estimated total cost, which is the total estimated cost to make all the parts on this particular job, and then the cost each field, which is the estimated cost to make one part on this job. The estimated cost each field is estimated by Calculation, calculating the following estimated cost divided by the job's make quantity. So the cost each is derived from the make quantity of the job itself. As I told you earlier, the estimated and actual costs here are actually derived from other transactions and modules in Job Boss. These fields are grayed out as because they are estimated from those other places or they're coming from the actual costs themselves applied to the job. For example, in the estimated row here, since we're focused, since we are focusing on this right now, the estimated labor is actually coming from the routing tab along with the estimated labor burden. So if I go to the routing tab, for example, we have several routing steps here that have estimated labor costs on the job, this area here, and that is where on the pricing costing subcategory, the labor and burden estimated costs are coming from. The materials, um, estimated costs are actually coming from the material tab of the job itself. So I do have materials on this job, four of them. Each of them do have a required quantity and a um, unit cost as well as an additional cost. So the quantity multiplied by the unit cost plus any additional costs is what makes up this material cost on the job here, whether it's a pick item or a buy item. Lastly, the services estimated cost is coming from the routing tab once again. So back to the routing tab. I have my outside service of plating on this job here, and I have $12.20 multiplied by the uh, make quantity of 510 plus a $55 additional cost for outside services charge, and that is what's making up the estimated cost in this field right here. And then once again, the estimated total cost field here is made up of the estimated total cost to make all the parts on the job, so all of these added together. And then the cost each is uh, the make quantity or the total cost here divided by the make quantity, which is 510 on this particular job. So now moving on to the next row down, the actual row. Uh, we have zeros all the way across the board here because on this particular job, we have not yet reported any labor time, which would fill out the actual labor cost as well as the burden cost. We have not picked any materials to the job. We have not purchased any materials to the to the job and also process the invoice for those materials. We also have not purchased any services yet to the job or uh, receive those services and process the invoice yet, which is why we have zeros all the way across the board here. Our actual time can be filled in by using the labor reporting function here and the time entry function if you do not have uh, data collection. If you have data collection, of course, you'd be using workstation driver or DC mobile one of our other data collection um, accessories to collect your labor time and your quantities against jobs. 
And then of course, for the materials and the services, the material, particularly the pick items, when you pick an item to the job using the material control pick function, those, those costs and those quantities actually get applied to the job as soon as you process the pick function, as soon as you save the pick function. Um, and then if you have materials that are being purchased to the job directly, the, those material costs for the actual column actually uh, populate once you process the vendor invoice for those bought items. Same holds true for the services uh, actual field. You would need to create a purchase order, receive that purchase order, and process the invoice for your actual uh, services cost to show up on the job. Then your total cost field here would be the total cost to date to make the parts on the job. So it'll be up to date with all your current transactions that affect actual cost on your job. And then your cost each field is the actual cost to date to make one of the parts on the job. This is calculated by the actual material plus the actual services divided by the job's make quantity. So just like the estimated cost each, the actual cost each is also derived from the make quantity and not the order quantity on the job. And then this last row here, the actual pre-bill row, um, this is the actual pre-bill amount. This is the amount um, calculated from uh, pre-bill payments from your customer on this particular job. Uh, it's the sum of the total price of line items on a customer invoice for each customer invoice line item against a progress payment on the job and each customer invoice line item against the job that has a prepay amount entered in recount, oh, sorry, in accounts receivable customer invoices. That is, of course, if you are using the job boss accounting module. And that is the costing tab, which is a sub tab of the pricing tab on the job entry function. We do talk about this extensively in our track six class, which is a virtual class held monthly. So I just want to thank you for your time today and uh, thank you for listening and attend that track six class. If you want to learn more about the costing sub tab or watch one of our on demand videos in the training center as well. Thank you so much. And that concludes this month's tech tip video. Yeah.